Hello and welcome to Maker Club, Upcycled Maker Club with the Warren County Library System. My name is Sandy Roberts and I am the Makerspace Coordinator for the Warren County Library. And every week at 3 p.m. I bring you a fun project that you can craft and invent and create and have some fun with. Um, and we're always going to try to use upcycled materials that we have around the home so that it's easy and inexpensive to make something new each and every week. Today we are having another Halloween craft because that's coming up so soon. So we are going to make a very, very easy light up decoration using just an old milk jug. And as a reminder, I am following along on my phone. So if you have any questions, you feel free just to uh, put them in. But to give you an idea, this is our simple little creation for today. So this is fun for the whole family. Anyone can do um, this very simple craft. And then I've got a couple of um, other ideas to show you that you can kind of take this idea and go beyond with it. So today for our materials, pretty easy. You're going to need a milk jug, clean or a water jug. Make sure it's washed out with soap and water and dried completely. You're going to need a simple Sharpie marker or a permanent marker. You can use multiple colors. You can just do black and white like I did. It's up to you. You're going to need a pair of scissors or an X-Acto knife. Um, so something along these lines. I've got my X-Acto knife or you can use a pair of scissors. I'm going to put these over here. And you're going to need something to light your creation. You can't see it too well in here because I've got a lot of light, but I've got a little tea light here. This is the battery operated kind that you can get at the dollar store, two for a dollar. Um, or you can use something like this. This is a very simple little strand of lights. These are very inexpensive too. These are dollar store strands of light, but they glow really nicely. So, you know, it's up to you, whatever your preference is, whatever you have around the house. Um, I tend to keep a lot of these around because they're great for costumes and things like that. So I use them over and over and over again. Um, let's see, we've got that. Oh, the other thing that you're probably gonna want to have on hand is a little bit of rubbing alcohol and some paper towels. And that's just because, I'm just gonna move this guy over. When we have our milk jug, there's a label usually on it and getting that last bit of glue off can be a challenge without some rubbing alcohol. You can also use the rubbing alcohol to take off any of the print if it gets in the way of your design. That's a labor of love. That's gonna take a little bit of time to do, but um, it does it does come off. Um, I've just got 50% here. If you've got 70 or 99%, that's gonna be even better. Um, so that's all it takes to make this uh, craft today. Very simple, very inexpensive. Why don't we go ahead and grab our milk jug and get started. Let's flip our cameras over here. Hello. So I've got my jug um, and this is pretty easy. You, could, you don't even have to take the top off. You do kind of want to make sure that it's not, you know, um, oh, my camera's frozen. Sorry. I am, my computer has been uh, very unhappy lately for reasons I do not know. And it seems to keep on freezing on me. So there we go. Now we're back. <laughs> um, maybe I just need to clean off some of the hard drive. I've probably got like way too much video content sitting around on there and I need to get it off. Um, so what we're going to do is we're just going to start by creating an area for us to be able to put in our light so it's easy to get at. Now you can, like I said, spend some time taking off that, um, those, those, numbers and stuff. And like I said, isopropyl alcohol will eventually get it off. It takes a little time, but I'm just going to plan instead to use this as my face. So I can just kind of ignore that that's there, which means on the opposite side here is where I'm going to want to leave an opening. I'm going to want to make an opening to add my light. Now you can use your um, scissors, pierce in and cut out a little circle. I personally like to use my X-Acto knife for this. So, you know, kids, you are going to ask a parent to help you with this, please, um, because you can accidentally hurt yourself. Um, and, but it cuts very easily, of course. It's very thin plastic. Watching my fingers. You might want to wear gloves if you feel more comfortable. And I'm just making a nice little flap, little door here. Whoop. And, you know, I'm not worrying about it being so perfect because... Um, you're not going to see it in the back. Shake out any of the extra plastic. There we go. Okay, so I've got an opening. Just put my knife away because I don't want to leave that blade sitting open. And you can see here, this is where, again, there's that leftover residue from the label. 
you can kind of sit and pick at it. You can wash it off a lot of times. It'll come off with some soap and water, especially if you've got like a little scrubby sponge that works really well for getting, um, getting all of this off. Um, but a little rubbing alcohol, whatever. Uh, I'm not going to go ahead and spend a whole lot of time with that right now just because I feel like you, you could probably figure that one out, right? You're a smart person. <laughs> all right, so you're just going to get all of that off. Make sure that that's nice and clean. And then we're going to come to our front where we're going to decorate. And this could not be easier, right? We're just going to get our magic marker, you know, our permanent marker. You do not want to use um, a watercolor marker or a, a washable marker on plastic. It'll just bead up. A lot of the brands will. You might get lucky. You might get a brand that, that works. But I find that the permanent markers work a lot better um, as far as staying on the, the plastic. Now, one little tip I will tell you, <laughs> you want to start from the top down. If you do the, your, your mouth and then go up, you're going to end up with your arm in your ink and you're going to end up with a bit of a mess. So um, start kind of top down. And I'm just going to go ahead and draw out some eyes. And I'm going to do my best be fairly symmetrical here. You may choose not to. You remember, it's your ghost. So you're going to do whatever you want, whatever kind of face you want. Um, skeletons work really nicely on here. You could do all kinds of different monsters. Uh, sugar skulls, if you like to celebrate Day of the Dead, get out your colored markers and you can do a sugar skull design on here. Really, the sky's the limit. Um, whatever shape you enjoy. I'm going for straight up ghost style today. Um, these are really fun if you collect a bunch of them and uh, kind of put a whole bunch in the yard or on the porch. Lots of little milk jug ghosts. Um, if you've got some old foam that you can make into some gravestones with a bit of spray paint, that's really fun too. You can make a really cool display. And you can see I'm just kind of going in and filling it in a couple times because I want it nice and dark and as kind of consistent as I can get. Just making, I'm just checking my camera is not freezing on me again. Definitely my computer needs a little bit of TLC. Maybe we'll do that tonight. <laughs> okay. Oh, I just realized I left my phone all the way over there and I couldn't see. Vinegar. Oh, great suggestion, Nicole. Vinegar is great, especially because isopropyl alcohol can be hard to get your hands on sometimes right now. Vinegar will take that label off too. Thank you. Good reminder. All right. So I'm just coming in, coloring. Now this is a great one, you know, obviously kids, but parents, a couple of milk jugs, keep kids busy for a nice long time. Grandparents, this is, again, as long as you make sure that someone's there, making sure that they're not using those um, magic markers on themselves. Uh, this is a great one for the, the grandkids to just kind of have fun with. Um, great for clubs, after school programs, homeschool pods, because the, the materials are just so easy to get your hands on. And the creativity that the kids come up with is just fantastic. So you can see I'm just filling it in. And like I said, I try to go over it a couple times, um, give it a little time to dry in between because I want a nice dark, shape. So there we go. I've got my eyes and I'm just going to give it kind of a simple, ooh, big circular mouth. And that's really all you got to do. That's pretty much it. It's very simple. I don't know. It's relaxing. I am not an incredible artist. Maybe some of you out there are and can do something really amazing. Um, you can get out the acrylic paints, and I'm going to show you that in a moment too, because acrylic takes really nicely to this kind of plastic. So if you prefer to use paint, that's a great um, medium to work with here. Though just be aware that you're going to want to keep your uh, coats of paint light if you want the, uh, or thin rather, if you want the light to be able to shine through them. Um, the other fun thing that works with this, if you decide you do want some color, is uh, tissue paper. Or if you've got kids that you don't want to maybe have using permanent markers, construction paper, stick glue. You can make a face, cut out shapes for the face, and glue them right on. And uh, then you don't have to worry about any kind of markers or paint or anything. Let me show you some examples of uh, other ways that you can do this. So there we go. Ta-da! That's my little ghosty. And then very simple, bring them back up. 
pop that top on and I'm just going to turn on my light like that and pop it in. Now I like to, as you can see, maybe can you see? Yeah, I keep the light kind of towards the back by the handle because I feel, I feel like it gives me a more diffuse glow on my face. Can you see it? Can you see him? Yeah. But if you like it further front, you can. Now, if you want to use, you know, these kinds of little fairy lights, you are going to want to kind of take them apart a little bit because you're going to want them to fill the space a little bit more. You're just going to feed them in there. <laughs> That's easy. Does it. And you just turn that on. I do really love the fairy lights for this craft. So if you have those around or are able to get a couple sets of those, they are nice and bright and you'll see them a little further. So there you go. That's an easy, easy, easy way to decorate with stuff that you probably have sitting around. It's, oh, apple cider jugs. Who doesn't have apple cider jugs right now? I, my family, we love apple cider. Let me show you a couple of other ideas that you can do. So coming back over here. All right. So, um, Say you want something that's maybe a little more flowing for your ghost. You can take plastic bag. I mean, I think a lot of us have these sitting around right now because a lot of the stores won't take them back. But you can see it's just, just a shopping bag from the, the local Acme. Um, and all I did to create this is I just took my bag. I did the same thing as I did previously. I just cut the hole in the back. I put in my fairy lights, right? I took my bag just put it right over the top and then I just used the actual top itself to secure the bag in place that way it flows I just took a pipe cleaner I used my exacto knife I put two little holes in there or your scissors would work and I just tied my pipe cleaner on twisted it that way I had a hanger and I just put it back on being careful not to you kind of lose some of the structural integrity to your jug when you cut that hole in the back and then I've got my lights to put the face on for this one because I found it a little challenging to um, to actually draw on the plastic bag. You might have better luck, but I was finding it very challenging. So I just cut out some craft foam, but the same thing you could use um, felt, you could use a uh, little leftover cardboard, some leftover construction paper, anything like that. And you could just cut out your shapes and I glued them right onto the plastic bag easy. And then I just threw on some googly eyes because I wanted him to be fun in the light too. And I thought that well, googly eyes make everything better. You guys know this by now. You've heard me say this many times right now, right? And then with the fairy lights, this guy glows so well. I really like him. He looks really cool outside, especially a little bit of wind. So this is a nice upgrade if you want to take the time to just kind of, I just cut the edges of the bag, made it a little raggedy so it moved around, but it, it adds a nice touch to your ghost. So that's one idea that you can do to take it a little further. And then this one, as I was saying, you could paint, right? So here, same thing. I cut the same hole in back. I've got the same tea light in there. I made it a little bit smaller hole because I found that when I painted my jug, I didn't, I wanted to try and keep as much of it the color as possible. So I really got a rich color. I just did one coat of acrylic paint and neon orange on here. You could try a light coat of um, spray paint. I probably could have gotten away with two. I didn't want to put too heavy a uh, coat of paint on because I want the light to come through, but it shone through really nicely. Even in this looks pretty opaque. I mean, you can see this looks pretty opaque. Um, again, I just used some craft foam to stick on my face. You could paint on a face if you are talented that way. You could, of course, use your um, magic markers to go in over your color. You could use markers to just color this whole thing. I personally might find that a little tedious, but if you enjoy using markers that way, you could go for it. I just made a little stem with some craft foam here and a couple of little leaves, okay, with a little bit of craft foam there. And there we go, nice, easy, oops, I just noticed I accidentally missed the spot, but <laughs> a nice, easy um, jack-o'-lantern. From there, you could paint it purple, make a vampire face, make it green, and do a light-up uh, Frankenstein. Like I said, you could use your markers and do a really cool sugar skull, Day of the Dead design. You could just go be creative, have lots of fun, use up whatever scrap feathers and um, craft supplies you have sitting around the house, get out the Google eyes, and make really fun lanterns. And the nice thing is, they're basically waterproof, you know, you make sure you keep that top on there. And this light is going to be very well protected, even if it's rainy. Um, 
and they store pretty well for next year. I just, last year I did a bunch of them. We just put them into a big box, put fresh batteries in this year, and they were ready to go again. So they're really very inexpensive, very fun, very creative use of some garbage that might be otherwise going out to the recycling um, to save yourself a bit of money and to make something special and unique for your Halloween. Okay, I know this was a short one this week. <laughs> last week I ran long with our, if you didn't catch this, last week we made these little plushy um, pumpkins from upcycled t-shirts. So make sure you go back on Facebook and watch that. Or we do have a YouTube channel where we archive all of our craft videos. So Luciana does great crafts. Uh, Mary Ellen does wonderful crafts. Our story times are archived there. Friday Steam, our Lego challenges. There's a ton of content as well as tutorials on using all kinds of um, things in the library. So definitely check out our YouTube site if you get a chance um, and you can learn how to make this cute little plushy pumpkin from last week. Um, and uh, keep an eye out all week long. We've got even more fun Halloween activities, including our virtual Halloween party coming up, I believe, tomorrow with Miss Lina. And on Saturday, we have our Treps Marketplace, which is our young business people that have been taking classes. They're launching their businesses at the Blairstown Farmer's Market at 9.30 a.m. next Saturday, which is, of course, the big day, Halloween, which is why all day long we have a virtual escape room for you. And you'll get an electronic trick-or-treat if you finish that escape room in the time permitted. So that is free and available to everyone. It'll be a lot of fun. Definitely take a look at our calendar. If you haven't been to our website lately, you really should. Why is my website not showing up? It's a techn technological kind of a day. It's just going to be like that. Anyway, our website is warrenlib.org, W-A-R-R-E-N-L-I-B.org. If you go to our events calendar, you will see that we have everything there, some things you need to register for, some things are just like this, and they're on live, um, live streamed on Facebook, and you don't have to register. But we've got a ton of Halloween stuff still coming up all week long. Make sure you check out that YouTube channel. Oh, we had some great face painting tutorials, too. You're going to want to look at that. All right. My name is Sandy Roberts. I'm the Makerspace Coordinator for the Warren County Library System. Thank you so much for joining me. I will be back next week. Next week is a special week. Um, at 3 p.m., I will be here with our Day of the Dead craft. We'll be making a light-up um, Calavera uh, Sugar Skull card, which is really fun. So you just need the template. You're going to need a little bit of aluminum foil, glue stick, and one of these little couple of these little tea lights. Um, so that's going to be really fun. That'll be at 3 o'clock. Then at 4 o'clock, I am doing a Zoom presentation on Day of the Dead and Sugar Skulls. You'll learn the recipe of how to actually make real sugar skulls. I'll walk you through that process. And then if you sign up, you're actually going to get a little baggie with um, a ceramic skull in it and some markers. And we're going to go through some of the symbols and what it's like to actually decorate our own skull. All right, so that's a really fun project. Make, there's only a couple spots left, so make sure you sign up for that right away, <laughs> okay? Well, thank you so much for joining me. I will see you again next week. Take care, stay safe, stay healthy, and keep making.